Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and in this uh, short video I'm going to try and address a question I'm often asked which is how good a printer do I need? Um, how good a printer should I get? What's the best printer? Well, I never answer what the be what's the best questions. Um, depends how much money you've got to spend and what you want to, what you want to do with your prints. However, there are a number of factors that people ask me about, about printers, and whether they're good enough. Um, now, I understand that most people asking about printers are looking to print as cheaply as possible. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it encourages you to print. But they also want a certain level of quality. And there are trade-offs in all of this sort of stuff. So let's start with a simple one, the number of inks. Um, I would say that a six ink printer, so uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, two other inks, whether it be a grey, a red, uh, a light cyan, light magenta, these are all capable of producing fairly good results. Now, notice I say fairly good because the whole idea of print quality is a nebulous term at best because it means different things to different people. Um, there is no well-agreed uh, way of measuring print quality. So you might have accuracy of colour, you might have how smooth the gradations are, uh, whether you can see dots or anything like that. There are lots of different ways you can analyse print quality. They mean, no two ways mean the same thing to the same people. Uh, this is not something you can apply a numerical analysis to and just go, uh, oh, it has so many inks, tick box, therefore it's okay. It has so many inks, cross, no, it's no good. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Um, I don't choose a car purely on the basis of the exact cylinder capacity. It's maybe one factor, but there are lots of others. So the answer is, and I'm sorry for people wanting definite answers here, the answer for a lot of this is going to be, it depends. More inks are better. Uh, this, this one here, which I, I've just been using, is a Canon Pro 200. That's a die base printer, and it has eight inks. Uh, it gives very good results. Um, not because it has eight inks, but because of all kinds of other features, which I, I cover in the reviews and other videos that go with things. So, number of inks, more is generally better, but you pay for that, and Sometimes even six inks is good enough for making nice looking prints. Um, I've got this big pile of prints here and I cannot remember without looking on the back necessarily which printer was made, uh, which printer made which print here. Now, if I put my reading glasses on and got a strong magnifying glass out, I probably could have a guess at some of them, but really it doesn't make that diff much difference. Next bit of, uh, and these are marketing figures. You'll see stuff like this as part of printer marketing. Remember, printer marketing has but one aim, and that's to get you to buy a printer. I don't sell printers, so I can safely ignore the vast majority of it. Dots per inch setting, DPI setting. Prints at a wonderful 8,000 by 6,500 dots. You'll see you know, numbers bandied about and stuff. What do they mean? They are referring to the effective number of dots that can be printed on the, uh, on the paper. Now, you might reasonably think more dots per inch is better. Well, yes, it is sometimes, but at a certain point, the returns diminish and all you're actually getting is a print that takes four times as long to print. The images that you could put into it that would actually show any difference are probably few and far between and also I happen to know that some of the figures you see in printer, mark, printer specifications are there for marketing purposes. Now that's not to say they're wrong but they're there for marketing purposes. Our printer does 5,000. Our, our printer does 5,500. Does it make a difference? No. There are far more factors make a difference in it. It's about what you print, how you're going to look at your prints. And once again, it depends. And I have come across printers where actually going to the highest quality setting 
produces slightly inferior results, in particular in black and white printing. Uh, on certain papers, prints don't look as good. So I generally, unless there's a, an obvious reason that I find when testing, I generally print at the standard resolution, you know, somewhere in the middle. Not the draft mode, but somewhere in the middle. I will test the higher resolution, and if it's something I think, yeah, that looks better, maybe some fine detail in a print or something like that, or tonality. If it looks better, I'll think yes. But remember that when I'm testing that, I'm testing the combination of the paper, the ink, the printer, and my profiles that I've made. So once again, the actual detailed numbers of the printer don't actually make that much of a difference. Another feature, media settings. Um, in general, I would say the more media settings a printer has, the more quality variations for paper types and things have been built into the printer, that's a good sign. Now, you may find lots and lots of media settings, though, that you've got no idea what they are. Um, I believe this Canon printer has a whole load of media settings for Japanese type papers, which I have never, ever seen. Um, yeah, they're there. Um, that's very good. But are they relevant? So remember that when you see lists of features, the dead hand of marketing has been at work. Um, and this is meant to look impressive and it's meant look, to look better than the other guy's printer. Um, yeah, printers are all relatively safe. Now, in terms of a cutoff that I think is a fairly useful one to apply, if you are interested in making prints of, and I will call it a good quality, I won't define what that is because there's no point really, but obviously good quality prints. Um, if I want to make those, I have a minimum cut off. The printer needs to be 13 inches or across here or bigger. So that's A3 plus or larger. Now, I don't tend to look at small printers very often. I have on occasions because basically the functionality in them becomes more and more limited and it impinges more and more on what I want to do. Uh, if I want a printer for printing photos, I'm going to say 13 inch or bigger. So that's this. This is the Pro 200. So that includes the Epson P700, the older P600, this Pro 200, the earlier Pro 100, Pro 300 dye based. Uh, that's that's uh, pigment based. This is uh, this is dye based. That comes brings back to one more sort of quality issue: pigment versus dye. Now I've looked at this when I did a comparison between the Pro 200 dye and 300 pigments. Um, I did a comparison between the two and decided that it really depends on what you want to do with the printer as to whether that makes a difference. In general, I choose pigment inks to print my work because I have certain quality requirements and they're my requirements. They may not match other people's. And also I do quite a lot of black and white. Now, pigment inks make a real difference for black and white. Um, if, I'm, if I'm printing a much more stable output. Now, you can get good black and white from some dye-based printers, particularly ones like this that's got you know, lots of inks, several greys in it, because it does make a difference there. Um, in normal use, greys, grey inks are there to save on other, they're there to give smoother gradations in colour. Uh, so, dyes, pigments, does make a difference. I choose pigment, that's because I want an even bigger printer than this, and I want the capabilities that they give. Pigment printers are more expensive though. So if we go right back to that bit where I said most people want cheaper printers, pigment printers are for people who want to spend a bit money on a bit more money on their uh, printing. Um, they are not necessarily better for everybody, um, much as people might like to say that. And I'll finish off with an observation I've made many times before. Any modern printer, this size and above, um, and some smaller ones as well, but any modern printer with sufficient editing skill, colour management and photography skills can make great looking prints. The limitation on print quality, the biggest limitation on print quality from any of these larger printers that I've tested is the ability of the person using them. 
It's not about paper choices and profiling and all kinds of things. They all come into it. But the key problem most people have with print quality is their basic photography. And before you think I'm sort of, you know, having a go at people, I include myself in that. Technically, I can make great prints. Whether they are great prints to look at is about my photography, my editing, what I want to show in my pictures. So, if you're looking for a new printer, do ask yourself whether the rest of your photography is up to it. Um, it's a question people don't like answering. Um, mine on occasions, I can see clear faults in my photography. No print quality, no new printer is going to make a difference. Um, and I'm going to say that works for almost everyone, even whether they want to admit it or not. New, current new printers are very good. The problem doesn't lie with the printers or the paper or the inks. Anyway, I hope that's of some use um, and sort of, you know, gives a bit of background to some of my videos and my other videos about printer reviews and various things like that. Um, you know, I'm not saying everyone's useless. I'm just saying there are an awful lot of useless photographers out there. Uh, yeah, I could be guilty of that on occasions. Why do you think I don't shoot weddings and don't photograph people? I've got no interest in it. But anyway. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find this interesting or of use. I've got lots more stuff to cover and um, thank you very much.